Happy to have with us here at ASCO 2011 uh, the president of the Turkish Pediatric Oncology Group, and she is Dr. Rajan Kabuti. She is also a professor of pediatrics and a pediatric oncologist at Istanbul University. Thanks for coming all the way here Thank and you. visiting. All right, let's talk first about the problem of pediatric oncology in Turkey. Yes, Turkey is a, a country with a population of 70 million people and one-fourth of the population is less than 15 years old and one-third is less than 18 years old. So we do have a lot of pediatric cancer at adolescents. We know that the children's cancer is 2 to 4 percent of all cancers. That's good, but still it's a substantial number. Every year in Turkey we do see somewhere of 2,500 new, new pediatric cancer cases. And the Turkish Pediatric Oncology Group was founded in 1997 and in fact, pediatric oncology in Turkey dates back to 1960s. And in 1984, it was accepted as an official subspecialty. So we have had a very good training in pediatric oncology, all pediatric oncologists that uh, have taken the license. And, but a society is important so that then you have national protocols, international collaboration, education and meetings so that uh, to educate the new uh, fellows and the new nurses also in pediatric oncology. And we do that. And especially uh, an important problem is the late, uh, the advanced stages. We do see patients in advanced stages a lot, more than in the Western world. And this is very important. So we ha we know that when we uh, have early, uh, early cases, uh, low stages, we can cure them better. For example, now in the United States, the survival rate in childhood cancer has increased to 80%. That's very important because when we uh, talk globally, it's like 60 to 70%. But we know in the developing world, it's like 20 to 30% or in the underdeveloped world. Where is Turkey in this respect? We have uh, our registries and a survival analysis for seven years. So the overall survival for seven years for pediatric cancer in Turkey is 65.8%, which is very important because most of these are in advanced stages. But of course we want it to increase. So what we're doing now is that uh, with the collaboration of the Ministry of Health, we do uh, have some education programs for increasing awareness in pediatric cancer and we teach the early signs and symptoms of pediatric cancer to practitioners and pediatricians all over the country. We go to many different cities and do education uh, sessions there on early diagnosis, not treatment, because we, we will treat them once they are diagnosed, but we want uh, them to be uh, early, the early diagnosis uh, because two-thirds of them come with advanced stages. If they are uh, diagnosed earlier with low stages, then we can have a better prognosis. So this is very important. And also, we do use the media that's very important to educate the parents. You know, in children's cancer, we do not have uh, the breast cancer survey, uh, like, uh, we do not have mammography for breast cancer. We have it in adults. And also we have the screening tests for adults for breast cancer, for prostate cancer, and for colorectal cancer. But in childhood cancer, we do not have screening tests. So we rely on the early signs and symptoms. So we want the parents to bring the children when they have these signs and symptoms to the doctor. So we can do that, especially with the media, with the television and the newspaper giving interviews so that because many of the mothers uh, and teachers, that, that, that's very important So because we have many uh, children diagnosed because the early signs and symptoms were detected by the teachers and told to the parents. So we try to tell about these in the media and also, as I said, we do the education sessions for the, both in, for our students in the university and for the practitioners and for the pediatricians all over the country so that we have the, they know the early signs and symptoms of cancer because no one would like to think of cancer in a child. They would first think the infections, which is really important, but at least we have to exclude that it is not cancer. A child that's coming with a bone pain at a certain place or bone pain for a long time, at least we have to think that it may be cancer or it is anemia for a long time and it is not diagnosed, it can be a leukemia, or it's a thrombocytopenia, 
or uh, it is fatigue for a long time or infections that are recurring, uh, we have to think of uh, cancer. So it's very important, or it can be a child that was uh, had a nice gait but cannot walk, has a gait or a, has a diplopia uh, or a convulsion with a febrile convulsion. We teach these, uh, especially in the sessions, that it can be an early sign or symptom of cancer. So it sounds like your pediatric oncology group has an initiative to educate and promote awareness of childhood cancer throughout Turkey. Yes, this is very important because, as I say, when we have a low stages, you have a survival rate of 90%, 95% in some cancers. Like in a neuroblastoma, stage 1 or 2, you have 80% of cure. Whereas in a neuroblastoma, stage 3, it's like 50%. Stage 4, it, is, it goes down to 20% or even less. So it's very important to have a, an early diagnosis and uh, a low stage when you diagnose the patient. Dr. Kapudi, great work with this oncology group. It seems like other countries may need to have you come and get all of them on the same page as well. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to tell about this, uh, the program that we're doing. And I think it is worthwhile and uh, yes, many countries may do that, especially the developing countries. And it is very important. Thank nice you. Nice job. Dr. Rajan Kabudi, she is president of the Turkish Pediatric Oncology Group, joining us here on Onkiview.tv at 2011 ASCO in Chicago, Illinois.